talking about artists paying victims to keep their name out of And I'm seeing like different celebrities. It was a rapper that we all know. Combs continued to move closer and then grabbed plaintiff's genitals through his pants, squeezing them in a rough and simple manner. Do you know if the notes from the book really were from Kim Porter? It was, yes, because I spoke to her um, probably like six hours before I got it, received it. Joe Rogan has revealed some incredibly damaging information about Diddy to the feds. It's like the gremlins start eating after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody Bro. who tells the story is like, I saw I go upstairs and these dudes are fing, yeah. like right on the couch. Yeah. And then I go in this room and these guys are fing, and it's yeah. like. And now Diddy is in even more trouble. And I want to start with Tania Wallace, uh, who claims she's been at a free cough and said she saw children, and it was hard for her to say it. It was very hard for her to say it, Ashley. So what she said was, um, that she was flown out from L.A. to Miami by the Saudi prince. Um, and they ended up eventually on Star Island at one of Diddy's parties. She says, you know, among many other things, I mean, she goes into detail. This, she says happened in 2018. Um, she says that um, she walked into the house and there was a cluster of adults around what she described as little people. Um, and they were dressed up as Japanese Barbies. Stay tuned because we will be getting to the bottom of that situation. But before we do, we have to understand the fallout from this new Diddy documentary. According to Ray J, these high profile figures are paying off Diddy's alleged victims. He said he's been hearing about people playing victims just to distance themselves from the situation. He also mentioned that some A-listers are offering money in exchange for silence, saying, I'll give you money, please don't talk. When Levine asked if this is happening right now, Ray J confirmed, yes. Documentary on Diddy, uh, the downfall of Diddy. Uh, this one is inside the freak offs. And we have told you about uh, what at least one person says happened at the freak offs. Um, now we wanna talk about fallout. Um, celebrities who may have been at some of these events, some of these freak-offs, um, which is now the subject not just of a criminal investigation, but more than 120 civil cases as well. Right, and we told you that there are celebrities who are running scared, uh, worried that their name is gonna come out in public attached to any of these freak-offs. And they are um, actually settling some of these cases, if you will. They're not really cases yet, but the civil lawyers have been sending demand letters to some of the people who are at these parties saying, pay up or we're going to name you. And they don't want to be named. And this is going on apparently a lot in Hollywood. And there's someone who may be kind of at the center of all of this. And that person is Ray J, uh, who is telling us uh, what he has heard directly from celebrities about how they are handling this crisis. And it, believe me, to them, it is absolutely a crisis. During the interview, Ray J said, people do catch and kills all day, referring to the act of paying someone to suppress information. He explained that some people have the truth, but are paid to keep it quiet, hoping the money brings them peace while the lie persists. Ray J claimed that several high profile individuals have been reaching out to him trusting him enough to share their stories about their experiences with Diddy. Levin asked for clarification, wondering if these people are concerned that their connection to Diddy might come out. Ray J confirmed that's exactly what's happening. He seemed to regret how much he had revealed, saying, I don't even know why I just said it, but I said it, so what? They're gonna be mad. Come get me. However, he stopped short of providing more details saying he had already said too much. And uh, he gave us a lot of information about what celebs are doing behind the scenes. I'm hearing about artists paying victims to keep their name out of it. You know people who have been uh, approached by women, men, whatever, um, who have said, give me money and I won't talk? Here's the other way around that, Harvey. 
I'll give you money, please don't talk. You are a well-connected guy. Um, do you know that what you've just described, is that going on now? Yes. They want to talk to me. They want to talk to me about what happened to them. They call me. They feel like they can trust me. Wait a minute, calling you, calling you for what? Calling you for what? Because they want to tell me about certain things that happened with them and Diddy. Ray, I, I, I want to make sure I understand this. As for Diddy, the music mogul was arrested in September and has pleaded not guilty to charges of sex trafficking, racketeering, and prostitution. He's also facing a series of sexual assault allegations. Attorney Tony Busby, who represents several of Diddy's alleged victims, suggested in a press conference that the public would be shocked by the list of Diddy's accomplices. This is something that's long been a topic of discussion. Who is the Houston lawyer who has more than 120 of these civil cases, and he said to us some really important things. Number one, he said, there are celebrities, there are politicians and business people, all of whom um, they are reaching out to, and from the way it sounds, they have already sent some of them demand letters saying, pay up or we're gonna file a lawsuit against you. And then he said in this documentary, which I think is really ominous, um, even if you didn't do anything untoward at a freak off, if you're a celebrity who was there or anybody who was there and you saw something going on where somebody was passed out and somebody was having mm -hmm. sex with that person and you didn't do anything, Tony Busby believes that those people are civilly liable and he's gonna go after them as well. Right, and, and, I, and clearly the approach here is he knows exactly what Ray J just said, that these celebrities right. are desperate to not be attached to it publicly in any way. Busby emphasized that they would make sure the evidence is solid before revealing more names. And there could be a lot of names. None of the people who or his celebrity friends is gonna speak or say nothing until they're either contacted or they know what they really got. So you feel like they might be worried that they might be on tape at one of Diddy parties doing something they wasn't supposed to be doing? I think that the celebrities that may be worried is because what Lil Rob said. Lil Rob said in his affidavit that Diddy had every room taped and bugged. Diddy had, yo, bro, can you imagine he had every room taped and bugged and they found little bugs and little tape recorders? I mean, little, little, little those micro um, projectors or whatever like that, or video cameras. They found them in the house, bro. So by them having those things in the house, and people know there's drugs, there's alcohol, there's loose women, there's loose men, woman on woman, man on man, all kind of crazy shit. Bruh, they just wondering who or when they're gonna let this stuff be known if it's on videotape. In October, Busby also told TMZ that he had sent demand letters to several A-list celebrities who may have had knowledge of Diddy's infamous freak-offs, offering them a chance to resolve the matter privately. Shine also recently opened up about his documentary and his connection with Sean Diddy Diddy during an appearance on the Tamron Hall Show, reflecting on the challenges he has faced throughout his life. Titled The Honorable Shine, the documentary covers Shine's journey from rap stardom to his time in prison, and eventually his transformation into a political leader in Belize. It chronicles Shine's rise in the 1990s music scene, his involvement in a high-profile nightclub shooting in New York with Sean Puffy Diddy, and his eventual deportation to Belize, where he pivoted to a career in politics. But Diddy can't really escape what he did, because Shine's past continues to surface in discussions about Diddy. In a recent interview, Natalia Rubin, a victim wounded in the 1999 nightclub shooting, alleged that Diddy placed a hit on her, 
forcing her to flee her life in Brooklyn. I, I, I'm a Brooklyn girl. I was born in Brooklyn. I was raised in Brooklyn. My family's from the Caribbean. Between, you know, whether we, it was times that we spent in the Caribbean or my life in Brooklyn, I'd considered myself a New York girl. I had no intentions of leaving. And probably had this happened, I probably would have never left. But when the district attorney's office gets information from one of their confidential informant sources saying that there's a bag on my head and I'm calling the district, uh, district attorney's office and I'm calling it everybody because I look out my window where I was living in Canarsie, Brooklyn, and there's four stretch blacked out SUVs on, I, I lived on the corner. There's one on that corner, that corner, one in front of my house, one on the next corner. Why? Why? That's never happened to me before. I've never seen that. I live in a typical Afro-Caribbean community in uh, Canarsie, Brooklyn, that I had never seen that. But now I look out the window after I got shot by Puffy and all of these SUVs blacked out on the corners and on the blocks of my house. Why? Why? When the district attorney's office notifies me and my mother that they got confident and my attorney confidential information from an informant saying that there's a bag on my head and there was also a bag on Scar's head, what should I do, sit there and wait for them to come get me? The 1999 shooting, which occurred at Club New York in Manhattan, left three bystanders injured. While Diddy and his bodyguard were acquitted, Shine was convicted and served 10 years in prison. Diddy has strongly denied recent allegations suggesting that minors were present at one of his so-called freak-off parties. The claims surfaced after Tanaya Wallace, who appeared in the documentary The Downfall of Diddy, Inside the Freak Offs alleged that she attended a party hosted by the music mogul in 2018. Third documentary that dropped on Tubi on the downfall of Diddy. This one is called Inside, Inside the Freak Offs. And um, we have a lot of information on what goes down at some of these freak offs um, that is really, really interesting. We should kind of preface this information, we should say, from first-hand first -hand people who were actually there. So we should preface this by saying, you know, look, in the documentary, we also talked to lawyers and others, and we know that other celebrities, other than Diddy, are in their sights. That there are lawyers now who have actually made dem sent demand letters to other celebrities who are at some of these parties um, for various reasons. Some were just there. Some allegedly participated in things that went south. And um, so with that backdrop, we spoke with a woman named Tania Wallace. Tania was, lived in Los Angeles, I think she still does, and this was in 2018. Um, and she says a Saudi prince had flown her out to Miami and ultimately taken her to Star Island at Diddy's house. Right, and when she uh, got to this party, again in 2018, um, well, she described, we're gonna to get to what the really disturbing thing she says she saw, but what everyone wants to know is about these celebrities. Um, this is what she said about that particular party. And it gets worse, much worse. So there, there, there are people doing drugs, there are people having sex. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing like different celebrities. It was a rapper that we all know, I'm not gonna say his name. But he came and was like, hey, you, and got the feeling on me. You said you saw celebrities there. Roughly how many people that you recognized? Three or four. And you said one was a rapper. Were they all in music? Yeah. And all famous? Yeah. And all participating? Oh, yeah. This rapper, what I am gonna say is, I'm used to seeing them dress a different type of way at this party. Two earrings on, and I'm looking like, he sure do look different when he's over here with Diddy. Much worse. These latest allegations come amid an ongoing federal investigation into Diddy's alleged involvement in sex trafficking and racketeering. Some speculate that the alleged parties were part of a broader illegal operation. However, Diddy's legal team continues to assert that the accusations are unfounded and will be disproven in court. In a related development, Courtney Burgess, a witness in the Diddy investigation, testified before a grand jury in the Southern District of New York. 
Burgess revealed that he had been given 11 flash drives containing at least eight sex tapes involving celebrities and claimed that two or three of those involved were minors. Subpoenas were issued and executed based on uh, the federal authorities' knowledge um, that these flash drives existed and, and had this kind of compromising material. I think it was based on statements that Mr. Burgess made in a prior interview. And those statements include descriptions of what the witness says he saw on those tapes. So I asked him about that, and he answered what he could, given the limitations imposed on him after testifying before the grand jury. Out of those eight videos, eight celebrities, six men and two women, how many of those eight celebrities um, were, were close to being underage or potentially two. underage? Two males. Females. And of those eight celebrities, how many of them were intoxicated um, or under the influence of drugs? Uh, 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 this is going to be all speculation. I just want to preface it by he wouldn't know appeared if they to be. were right. Sure. Appear to Let be. Let me rephrase right. it. Based on yes, understand. Out of the eight celebrities um, who were recorded having intimate relations with. Sean Combs, how many of them appear to be either inebriated or intoxicated or into the influence? All of them. All of them. Out of those eight, how many appear to be potentially victimized? How many might have been victimizing? I think um, all, to be honest, all. Were, were victims, victims or were perpetrating? Victims. They were all eight were victimized, yeah, meaning victim. This was happening to them, and they were inebriated. Right. Not knowing, I guess, how much proof it was in it, what they was doing. The flash drives were reportedly shared with him by Kim Porter, Diddy's former girlfriend, before her death. You received on the flash drives, was it the completed book, or was it notes from Kim Porter that later were made into a book? It was completed. It's only 60, okay. only, it's only about 54 pages. It was completed. Sure, and in the beginning, it says, Kim made me promise that if something happened to her, I would make sure this book became public to the world. The way Sean moved, I knew that was a promise I would have to fulfill. Kim knew I was a woman of my word, and this book was going to make it to print. So it sounds like it is a woman who wrote um, up the notes from Kim Porter. Does that sound accurate? It's, it's, have you read it? Yes. I haven't even read the book. Do you know who the woman is? No. And and to be clear, he received it in its complete form. So I think just to make sure we have some clarity here, yeah. the manuscript that Mr. Burgess received was already in its complete form. Um, it's not did, that he ate, uh, edited it or changed anything. Got it. Um, he did give it to someone Makes else who, who then edited it, but that's not how he received Our, it. Okay, so Ariel, did um, did your client, Courtney, receive the book from the woman who seems to have written it, saying, I'm a woman of my word, and this book is gonna make it to print? I don't know if he received it from a man or a woman. He can answer that. I received it from a man. I tell you, some, somebody she was dating. Do you know if the notes from the book really were from Kim Porter? It was, yes, because I spoke to her um, probably like six hours before I got it, received it. On October 14th, six more accusers filed lawsuits against Diddy. Two men claimed they were sexually assaulted by him at separate white parties in the Hamptons, one of them only 16 at the time. One woman, identified as Jane Doe, claimed that Diddy raped her in a hotel room in 2004 when she was 19. Another accuser claimed that Diddy forced him to perform oral sex on him in 2008 inside a Macy's stockroom, while another man alleged he was drugged and assaulted at a party in 2021. John Doe says he was sexually assaulted at a party promoting Ciroc. This a party apparently happened in Los Angeles in or around 2022. It was hosted by Ciroc and Diddy, who owned some stake in the company and was a celebrity spokesperson for the drink. Prior to this party, John Doe had a long-standing relationship with Diddy. 
John Doe is a businessman in LA whose company specializes in renting luxury cars and jewelry. In the past, John Doe had rented cars or jewelry to Diddy and members of his entourage. John Doe showed up at this party after Diddy himself personally extended an invitation. John Doe agreed based on his past relationship with Diddy. At the party, John Doe noticed some pretty high profile celebrities in both the entertainment and music industry. His lawsuit includes some pics of this, with Diddy on the couch discussing his Ciroc business with other high profile people. The lawsuit goes on to state that during the event, Combs instructed John Doe to join him in Combs' private office. Plaintiff went into the office where the two were alone. Plaintiff assumed Combs wanted to have a discussion about business. However, Plaintiff immediately realized Combs was intoxicated and acting strangely. Combs began awkwardly moving closer to Plaintiff. As he did so, Combs removed his pants and exposed his genitals to Plaintiff. Combs continued to move closer and then grabbed Plaintiff's genitals through his pants, squeezing them in a rough and sexual manner. Plaintiff, shocked and disoriented, froze momentarily and did not know how to respond to the weirdly inappropriate sexual advances made by Combs. This situation apparently escalated until someone, referred to as Professional Athlete A, entered the office and interrupted this assault. John Doe left the party and went home but took a picture of the Ciroc bottle from the party. We're watering it down so you don't get bogged down in the details, but they are truly ugly. Do you think he'll escape this time? Let us know in the comments below.